So Game Freak really decided to give us a Pokemon based off of Flamingo. That's literally just a Flamingo. And its name is just Flamingo. I don't know. Competitively though, it's also nothing too special. It has solid attack, but its flying and fighting typing is relatively unique and gives it some solid offensive presence. We slap on a Choice Scarf to make this bad boy fast, and Dual Stab in close combat along with Brave Bird does hit extremely hard. Its ability Scrappy also allows it to hit ghost types with fighting moves, which always comes in clutch. And in general, Flamigo just always ends up being a lot more useful than people expect. So Flamigo is peak Pokemon design creativity. It's, I mean, obviously literally just a Flamingo, but it kind of looks like a boxing glove, and so it's a fighting type Flamingo, and this thing's kind of cool. I don't know. It's grown on me a little bit since I first saw it, and I kind of like it. It also doesn't really get any usage, which makes me like it more, and so that's what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So first of all, I want to apologize for the relatively sporadic upload schedule lately. I recently just got married out of state, and so I've been dealing with that. But we back now, baby, and let's get into it. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Heatran. Now I have a big old thick noodly boy, and Yuxus defense is basically here to set up some stealth rock and kind of just be my punching bag of the squad. Be able to take hits from pretty much anything, and then also potentially get some you know pivot action going, get rid of items, and just be a noodly guy. So. They decide to go for the Magma Storm, does in fact trap me in some Swirling Magma, which does not seem like the best place to be, and I eat a little bit of leftover. So, at this point, I decide, I have a couple different options here. If they want to stay in and just go for some more damage, it's kind of fine. I could go for potentially a knockoff or just some decent damage, but I decide I'm actually just going to teleport my ass on out of here. I mean, they actually do end up switching, which is perfect, because with the slow teleport, I'm able to see what they want to switch into, which turns out to be the Darkrai, which... Is a pretty spooky fella, and then I can basically be like, yeah, this is not a good time for me, I'm gonna go ahead and teleport out of here. So, the slow teleport works out super nice, because now I can just decide who has the best momentum, you know, versus the dark right here. So, it turns out my Flamingo is kind of the guy for the job here. I'm Choice Scarf, so I know I'm gonna be able to outspeed it, and I would like to put these skinny ass legs to use, kind of show them that uh, they may be twig shaped, but they actually have some pretty good firepower behind them. So, I bring this thing in, I'm gonna go for the obvious play, just go for that close combat, they do not expect the Scarf, and we beat the hell out of the Dark Cry. So that's gonna take care of that, and uh, Flamingo looks really nice in this matchup. With the Scarf, we obviously kinda ruined the surprise there. They now know that we are locked into the close combat, which uh, is mostly fine. So, they can decide whatever they wanna switch into here on the Revenge, and they decide to bring in the Urshifu. Of course they have the Urshifu, or Urshifu, this thing is just always around and just ruining people's days with crits and nonsense. So I decide I obviously want to keep this thing intact. I can bring it back in later for a Brave Bird option versus, you know, the Urshifu. So I decided to bring in the Apple. I'm like, hey, this is a pretty damn good day to not get Ice Punched. And then I come in and get Ice Punched, which does, in fact, kill me because that's four times effective and uh, it makes sense. I just don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with the... Uh, the freaking dragon warrior ass bear. So, good news is I can actually just go right back into the Flamigo. I, I'm thinking, yeah, hey, this is actually fine. Unless they go for a Terra, a Stab Brave Bird should potentially kill here. At least that's what I'm thinking. So, I bring this thing in. They actually do not switch out. Brave Bird is just going to straight up take care of it. And so, the revenge killing is pretty clutch with the Scar Flamigo. So, I do take some recoil from that, which is unfortunate. But we're in a pretty damn good spot here. Anytime we can get rid of the Shifu, we're having a better time. So, now they decide to bring in the Iron Moth. And as this thing comes in, Stealth Rock is pretty nice chip. And being locked into Brave Bird, it's not looking like I quite have a kill here. And the Moth can be a bit scary. It is going to get the Quark Drive special attack, which makes this thing hit pretty damn hard. And I decide I do want to save the Flamingo and just see if we can get some more use out of this fella. Because I really, I do feel like we can. So, I decide to go into the Deoxys. Once again, this is kind of just the guy who is here to just switch into stuff. And that's exactly what Greg is here to do. Greg is bulky, and uh, they go for a discharge here. Not going to do a whole lot of damage, also do not get the para, and that is relatively fine. I do eat some leftovers, because some even the noodles got to eat. And at this point, I kind of imagine, you know, they just continue to go for some damage here. I want to put this in range so that I can finish it off with a Brave Bird from the Flamigo. But they actually end up going for the U-turn here. They're going to end up pivoting on out of here, and as I go for the Nightshade, they decide to bring in the Rillaboom. So, Rillaboom is also something to be worried about. It does have, obviously have the priority in things with the uh, freaking grassy glide. 
And overall, this thing is just here to play the drums and be annoying. So I go for that nightshade here. Gonna obviously just do that 50 HP chip, which is always nice. It does, of course, soak a little bit up from the old grass that it laid around, which is good because it also helps out me. I also have some leftovers, and Greg is like, I'm feeling actually pretty damn good here. Now, I don't have much that wants to hard switch into this, and also Deoxys is kind of used up at this point, so I just decide to stay in as they do actually go for the knockoff. It looked like I live on 1 HP for a second, but I in fact do not, and I just die. So, knockoff does take care of me, um, but with that thing going down, it does at least now give me an opportunity to just switch into uh, some threats, and guess what? Guess who's the threat? It's freaking Flamigo. This thing's gonna come back in, because with our dual stab, close combat, and Brave Bird, does a lot to literally everything. So, problem is, going for a Brave Bird, is that they have the option to switch into the Heatran. Now, they haven't been making pivots like that already, so I kind of, based off of their playstyle, just decide to go for that Brave Bird and make the safe play, but instead, in comes the freaking Lava Frog. So they are gonna bring this in, which is the downfall of being Scarfed at this point, because I don't do enough damage with that Brave Bird, and I obviously now cannot click uh, Close Combat. So, Heatran comes in nicely here, it also does get some health from the grass and the leftovers, and obviously, Migo has to get the hell out of here. There's a lot of pivoting around with working with Flamigo, but if you find yourself in a matchup, it is super nice. So, I decide I'm gonna go ahead and imagine they probably go for that Magma Storm. I can then bring in the Incineroar, and Chester Cheeto's ass is gonna come in here, snort a line of Cheeto dust, and uh, <laughs> feeling crazy out here. So, Intimidate doesn't help us out much at all, but they go for the Flamethrower here, and it's not gonna really do anything either. Now, this is a different type of Incineroar, while mostly they're gonna be kind of pivots with things like Parting Shot and Fake Out nonsense. I am, in fact, a more offensive one that tries to get, like, its speed up with things like Flame Charge, and then I have a Weakness Policy and Bulk Up and Drain Punch and all sorts of stuff. So, I go for the Drain Punch, which is gonna be a super effective hit, which is important, because with that chip damage, if I can get it in range to where I only need to click Brave Bird with Flamigo to kinda clean up the rest of the game, that would be nice. However, it doesn't quite do enough to the point where after the Grassy Surge and the leftovers, it's going to be healthy. So, I do at least get my weakness policy boost from the Earth Power, which is nice because I'm able to live. And that's because we are one bulky wrestling kitty. So, that is pretty good because at this point, I can finish this thing off with a Drain Punch. However, they know that this is their only real switch in uh, to things like the Brave Bird from Flamigo. So, I, I just go for a Drain Punch once again. They are going to end up making the play into uh, a nice pivot here on the Sinistra. So, the freaking Matcha T fella is kind of interesting here. Now, I do want to at least try to get some chip on this thing just because uh, I can put it in range for Brave Bird to kill once again. I'm, I'm working toward the freaking Flamigo body bag out here, which would be incredibly satisfying. So, I obviously just punch right through the cup, and at this point I am actually faster, and that's because I am like a max speed Incineroar, and hell yeah. So I go for a flame charge here. Well, unfortunately, even with the weakness policy, not going to be quite enough because this thing is kind of thick. And it also has a freaking citrus berry, so it's even going to heal itself even further. But mo most important thing I wanted here was just that chip to put it in range to ensure that it goes down. So, a Scald does finish me off, which is mostly fine. So, down goes Chester. However, once again, the Revenge Killer is about to come in and try to do some revenge killing. And that is our boy Balrog. All right, I guess she's a girl. But regardless, she'd be punching. So, there's actually kind of an interesting interaction here. If I want to kill this thing, I have to click Brave Bird, right? They can easily just switch into the Heatran to soak that up. Or, if I go forward and kill this, then they go into Heatran and then I have to switch. Or, I can actually bust out the Terra Fighting, which is going to go ahead and boost up my close combat. And you're thinking, hey, you can't punch that thing, it's a ghost. But obviously, freaking Flamigo does not care. I have Scrappy, and with the fist on my head, we're looking extra goofy. And uh, it is going to give me... Extra boost to the stab that I need for the close combat to kill here. So they do actually just stay in, and we kind of ruin the plans, and now they actually cannot go into the Heatran uh, because I'm just locked into that. So that is always extremely satisfying to close combat through it, and that does take care of the Matcha Tea. So that feels pretty solid. We use up the Terra, but we're in a pretty good spot here because also losing my flying type, I get a little bit of extra HP you know, from the grassy terrain. So. Now they can switch into whatever they like, they decide to go into the Rillaboom. So the grass was gone, and now it's right back. And the problem with that is because since I lost my flying type, I, they now have a neutral hit with a Grassy Surge. Plus I have a defensive drop from the close combat. So I don't really want to risk taking that, and the obvious priority is obvious. So I can actually just end up switching into the Tinkaton here. It actually has a good matchup versus this because it doesn't have anything that can actually really kill me. And Homegirl is about to do some bonk in here. Play a little bit a little bit of whack-a-mole with the freaking gorilla. So 
We come in, we float in the air with our air balloon, doesn't really matter because we get freaking popped by a grassy glide, which we take easily. And at this point, I can go for a nice little gigaton hammer. I am actually a max speed tinkaton, so I should be able to outspeed here. And uh, even with our low ass attack stat, gigaton hammer just does a giga damn ton of damage. So I go for that, I'm gonna go ahead and smash him. That does take care of the Rillaboom, which is amazing. And now they are running a little bit low on options. They have the Iron Moth along with the Heatran left. So two pretty scary fellas, but when you have a Flamingo, it, everything's fine. So they bring this thing in. It is gonna be around half just from that Stealth Rock. And I don't really have much to switch into here. Plus Tinkaton's not necessarily useful here. So I decided to go for the Encore, thinking that they're probably gonna be faster if they're running max speed, which should at least just allow me to Encore whatever they wanna do and make, I don't know. Essentially, I can't touch it with Fleming, or the freaking Tinkaton anyway. So they actually end up busting out the Terra Fire. They wanna boost that stab just to ensure that they can knock out Tinkaton. I do actually end up going first, which reveals they are not gonna be at least a plus speed nature. Now they can fire off a Fiery Dance, and with that extra you know, little bit of fire damage, they be dancing all crazy. And that does take care of the Tink, who is pretty damn specially defensive, but that is going to knock us out. And with that, it opens up the door for our favorite bird. So, this thing did lose its poison typing upon Terra, so now it's actually just going to be neutral to a close combat, which is perfect. Meaning I don't have to go for the Brave Bird, and then with that extra stab we have from the Terra, we are looking pretty nice once again. And we're really thriving off the fact that the no entry hazards has allowed us to just freely... Yeah, bring this in without punishment. I can go for that close combat easily outspeed and that is going to beat up the moth So that is amazing because now their final mon is gonna be the Heatran and Heatran is allergic to these fists And obviously does not want to catch these flamingo hands. So we have effectively body bagged the hell out of them with our freaking Flamingo this thing is hilarious and always seems to provide way more value than I feel like people give it credit for so in comes magma and they're actually just gonna go ahead and conserve this thing's life by just going for the run there which is gonna be the end of the match and that is exactly why we play with the damn flamingo and I don't know I thought that was just a goofy match and always a fun time so with that you already know it's gonna bring us into match number two so this is about the time where I ask hey if you've been enjoying the video or just made it this far into the video you should probably hit that like button because it helps out my channel and just promotes some growth and that's what we're working toward out here. So let's go ahead and jump into the next game. So this time my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the mixtape. This thing is probably a mixed attacker. It's, a, it's an ape and it's got a fire mixtape. I have Greg, of course. Also this thing's named Greg because I asked my, I guess my freaking, my wife now, <laughs> which is crazy to say. I was like, hey, what should I name Deoxys? She said, Greg. So he is Greg. Now, they decide to go for the U-turn. Nice little pivot action is gonna get a super effective hit for a little bit of chip here, and allows them to go into something better fit to handle, friggin' Deoxys, who turns out to be old Pinch. And uh, Crawdon is very scary just because this thing can do a couple different things here. As I set up my Stealth Rock, it can either, you know, go for something like a hard, really hard-hitting adaptability knockoff. It can potentially set up something like a Dragon Dance or a Swords Dance and then have Aqua Jets. Moral of the story, I'm always very afraid of a crowd on here. So I decide my best option is to kind of expect it to go for something like a Dragon Dance. If I'm them, I'm probably going to set up here. So I decide to go into the Incineroar and at least just kind of help out with going for an Intimidate, which should at least nullify a Dragon Dance and then I can still at least take a hit, hit it with a nice little Drain Punch and do some Chester bullshit. So I come in, I do get that Intimidate, but they're actually just going to go straight for the knockoff, which does get rid of my weakness policy, which, you know, is kind of fine. And as at this point, I'm like, I should really just try to get some chip on this thing. If I can just guarantee some good damage on it, that's going to be nice. Plus, it, intimidated, I know that I can take an attack from it, you know, no problem. So, as I go for the drain punch there, they're actually going to end up switching into a freaking evil, veiny clown with cinder blocks. And drain punch isn't going to do much here. So, young nubbins in Conkel, there is another thing that's extremely scary. Because, as you're going to notice here, it is going to go ahead and burn itself. So... That's because, obviously, with the Guts, it's now going to be able to hit extremely hard with even priority mock punches. And I realize I should probably keep Incineroar around. That Intimidate's going to be really nice for things like, specifically, freaking Conk and also, you know, Crawdon. So, I decide to switch on out here. And I'm going to go back into Greg. Defensive freaking Deoxys is kind of a guy that handles this pretty nicely. It does, obviously, you know, threaten me with a knockoff, but that's mostly fine. So, they actually end up going for the Defog, which... I kind of forgot that this thing even has the ability to do that. I guess, I don't know, how does he do it? I don't know. I guess Buddy's just got crazy strong farts, just blows away the stealth rock. And uh, that, that's kind of fine. So 
It is also getting hit hurt by that burn chip, which is always nice. And at this point, I imagine they probably don't stay in here. I, as I want to teleport and try to get myself momentum with a switch, I realize it's probably just in my best interest just to get back up that stealth rock. I want to make this thing, at least force it to come back in. If that's going to be their only hazard removal, it's going to make my life a whole lot easier in that I can... You know, make sure they have to waste a turn with that. So I go for that stealth rock, set them back up. Greg says, no, no, no. These stealth rocks are sticking around today, big boy. And they decide to bring in Empoleon. So Empoleon on this matchup, it feels like this thing is going to do a couple different options here. Either it's going to set up stealth rock of their own, or they're going to go for a setup like an agility, which is kind of the main threat that I'm worried about here. So I decide to make an aggressive play and hard switch into the Flamigo here. Now that's for, obviously if I come in on the Stealth Rock turn, I can then threaten it, but also, if they go for an Agility, I should potentially still be faster, which is exactly what they're gonna do. They're gonna go ahead, shake around real fast, and that's gonna double its speed. So, it's a fun interaction here in that if it's a timid nature with max speed EVs, it does actually barely outspeed me, but if it's not gonna be running that timid nature, which most of the time if you're going Agility, Empoleon is gonna be modest, I actually outspeed just being jolly with my choice carp. So, as they're gonna go ahead and bust out the Terra Ice, that tells me they want the kill with the Ice Beam. So, thing looks fitting with the freaking snowflake on its head. However, I do outspeed, reveals it's gonna be modest, and the close combat does take care of it. Crit should not have mattered. And that is amazing, because that takes care of Empoleon, it also takes care of their Terra, and that is a uh, solid outspeeding. Anything after a plus two agility, it's pretty damn nice. So, <laughs> Polion goes down, and once again, Flamigo is revealing why this thing is the damn goat. We're looking, standing tall out here on, on our skinny ass legs. So, now they obviously know that I'm Choice Scarf, they know that I can't Brave Bird, they decide to bring in, or at least back in, freaking Nubbins, who does have some considerable chip here, and as I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know what? With that, jam with that damage, if I can just go for that Terra, I actually grab myself a nice little kill here, because Terra fighting is uh, gonna boost that just even further. So, they actually decide to predict me to go into the Deoxys, because that's what I did, you know, versus Conk before, and they decide to bring in uh, the Crawdon. So that is looking like a whole ass meal. I guess it's not shrimp, but I, I, I guess Flamigos probably would enjoy a little, a, little, a little shellfish treat here. I go for that Terra fighting, and uh, that's gonna be really nice for me, because obviously now we just grab the free close combat kill, and Flamigo is just, again, stirring shit up out here doing things, making stuff happen. So, taking care of the Karadon is really good. That's a huge threat out of the way. I see why they probably just did that double switch. It's expecting me to go Deoxys because it's kind of the obvious play. Um, but just that chip on Conk just made me feel like, hey, this is fine anyway. And so now, they got they got themselves a little bit of a hole to dig themselves out of. And uh, I'm out here just looking pretty strong still with the Migo. So, they decide to bring in the Go-Goat. Not the guy you see often, but Go-Goat Gadget is... Kind of a weird dude who I would like to go for the Brave Bird against, but then I realize unless this thing is literally max HP and defense, I think I grab a kill here with a Terra boost in close combat and that's exactly what happens. I just straight up uh, take care of the goat and uh, I was like, is there something I'm missing here on this matchup? Unless it was like grassy pelt on grassy terrain, I find myself in a good spot there. So that takes care of that and <laughs> we are just running through him once again with Migo. So this thing is my damn Amigo and now they're going to go into Noctowl. So, a fellow bird brethren, I'm like, you know what, you don't even resist this close combat. I'm just going to go for that again, and uh, Noctowl is going to straight up just go down. So, finally, finding that momentum and taking care of the Crawdon, at least them losing the option for like an Aqua Jet priority, it puts us in a spot where we've just really kind of opened the game up. And now, here's the thing. So, I've lost my resistance to fighting, and as they go into the Infernape here, I'm thinking, how many defensive drops do I have? I have a, a good bit, I think, what, like three or four? And uh, I am at least still at full HP, so I'm thinking, even if they have a mock Punch here, I should be able to take at least one of them. So I just go for the close combat anyway. Turns out they're not gonna go for that priority, and Scarf Flamigo is literally body bagging like we've never seen before. That takes care of freaking Infernape. And that's why sometimes running, not even just a crazy Terra, just add some extra stab onto an already hard hitting move like close combat, you're gonna have a good time. So, we absolutely ran through pretty much everything, but here's the thing, they go into the Conkelder here as the last Mon, and while I am definitely looking real bad on defenses here, a Guts Mach Punch does kill the Flamingo. And I cannot let my Amigo die. So I'm actually just going to make the pivot here, which is kind of just disrespect, I guess. Uh, but I bring in Snapple, who's like, hey, how's it going out here? Hopefully I don't get Ice Punched. And I don't this time, which is good. So the Mach Punch doesn't do a whole lot to me. And this thing brings itself down below half. 
after the guts here. So I am just going to go ahead and try to drop a Draco here if need be. They go for the Drain Punch, and it doesn't quite have enough to kill me. And I honestly kind of am hoping at this point that it heals enough to where it can now live the Draco Meteor so that I can just bring back in Flamigo and then kill it. But I just dropped the Draco hard enough to where it takes care of the conch. So that's going to be the end of the game. And a couple of plays has just turned that one into a damn bloodbath. So that's going to be the end of it. Flamigo is fun to use and he's just weird. And that's uh, the makings for a good, a good fella. So thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.